guys, I'm Madison Samir and welcome back to my channel. Today, I have a brand new weekly reading vlog for you guys. So, I have no idea what I'm reading this week. I do know what I'm starting with, and that is Crown Chasers by Rebecca Coffendaffer. It is a YA sci-fi that is releasing on the... Oh. 29th of September. So we're following Alyssa, she is the niece of the emperor and basically what ends up happening is when her uncle passes away he doesn't actually name anyone as his heir and Alyssa doesn't want to be the heir anyway. She's you know she's currently a captain of her own ship and she does like all these cool missions and she like you know does all this scouting and she's like very revered and has like medals and stuff. She actually has um one person as well on board with her I don't know why she only has one person on like the the ship with her but like she does his name is hell monkey hm they kind of have a bit of a romance between each other when they um get drunk or because like they're only the, they're the only two people on the ship at times so like they do have a bit of a romance but she's actually bisexual um or she might be pan but at the moment i think she's just bisexual but what happens is her uncle ends up invoking the crown chase which means that one member of each of the prime families which are kind of like the head families for all the different planets has to then send someone to participate in this race and they have to find the royal seal and if you find the royal seal you are then recognized by like kind of the universe that you will be the next emperor and so she has to participate because she's the only eligible person from her family because they are a prime family so we're following her and then we're also following randomly like every couple of chapters this other guy named Edgar Valls um don't really know what his situation is yet but yeah we're basically following her on the crown chase now and she's looking to not actually win but she wants to help someone else out it's kind of Hunger Games-esque we're like oh but each district has to choose one person and that's a whole thing but they can't kill each other that's part of the thing if you kill another competitor you will actually be disqualified from the competition so it's an interesting clause that's in there but yeah um i have no idea how this vlog is gonna go this is my first vlog while i'm actually in school i started grad school two weeks ago it might just be a boring vlog and i might scrap this or i'll keep it or who knows hopefully you guys still enjoy it because I do like vlogging, so meh, we'll see. Okay, I'll catch you guys up later once I have stuff to show you. Bye. Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick update to let you guys know that... Hi. Um, I'm like around 50% of the way through Crown Chasers. I don't think I've shown you guys what the book looks like. So hang on. Hello. So yeah, 50% of the way through it, I just, I, I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not a sci-fi person. I keep trying, um, and I will keep trying to find the right sci-fi book for me, but it just seems that I don't have luck when it comes to reading sci-fi. I'm just, it's always just so much, and it always feels like there's just too much going on in sci-fi books that it just annoys me and this is a debut so there are certain points in it where it does the writing feels like a debut it feels kind of juvenile and on the slightly younger side of young adult even though there are a lot of ish mature sub well, there are a lot of mature subjects in this um you know especially when it comes to drinking and things like that i know there's going to be a lot of people who do enjoy this book but I'm just, I don't think I'm a sci-fi person. I keep trying, I keep hoping. And let me know down below, please comment your favorite sci-fi novels um, for people that don't generally enjoy sci-fi because I wanna, I wanna try some. Cause it's a, it's a genre that I really do wanna get to know and like, like more. I do plan on finishing that book tomorrow because I need to. But um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated and goodbye. Hey, so uh, no, I haven't read any more of the book. I'm just, I'm not gripped by it and so I actually haven't touched it for I think uh, two nights now <laughs> but I do have a couple of packages here three and they're all mass markets I bought five mass market paperbacks online at used bookstores and I have no idea I'm, I'm trusting in what <laughs> the description said when it was like in good condition but I actually have no idea and this is my first time buying used books online because I used to just like walk into half price books or like to any used bookstore and like do it that way but there aren't really many out here near me on Long Island. I'm gonna start with the one I'm most excited for which actually came from a used bookstore in 
uh, London or England somewhere and it was like only I think it was it was $8 to ship it but the book itself was like $2 so I was like ho 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 that's a steal um, and okay it's not bad not bad condition this is my second edition of this book I already have it in hardcover but um Oh, okay. It's not actually in bad condition at all. This is actually pretty okay. It's not fantastic, but this is a really hard book to get a hand of, so I'm happy with it. I wish that the spine, you know, wasn't broken like that, but a book that came out in like the 80s is kind of going to be hard to get a physical copy of without it being <laughs> already read, I feel like. Yeah, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, this one actually came really nice. This is really nice. I'll just take off the stick on the side. But here we have A Marriage from a Scandalous by Joanna Lindsay. And, ah, my first step back. And then we have To Catch an Heiress by Julia Quinn. This was only like three bucks. Um, there's no step back on it, which... Kind of sad, I hoped it would, but it's fine. And then the last two books. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, this one's not even yellow. Okay. Oh, okay, came a little bit dented. Oh, okay, it's like, it's like a lot of bit dented. It's, it's okay, it's in a little, I can, I can flatten it. Um, oh, there's no step back for this one. That's another thing, it's like you never know if it's gonna have a step back or not. It's like ripped here a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. It's not, not in the best condition. And then, only with your love. Wow, only one of these had a step back. That's. Wait, this is not the cover that I picked. Okay, I'm annoyed. This is not the cover that I picked. I did not pick this cover. I picked. I'll put the cover up here. <sighs> I'm just really glad that this came like as it did because this is the one I was most excited for and then these were kind of like trial runs and then it was, it was an okay trial run but could have been better. <laughs> Alright, um, I don't know what time it is but I do start class at 6 so it's either 5 o'clock now or 5 something so I'm gonna read my book for whatever little time I have left and then I'll catch you guys up uh, tonight. Goodbye. I did it. It's 2am but I did it. I finished the book. <laughs> Oh my god. Honestly, the best part of this whole book was the character Hell Monkey, which I think I talked to you guys about earlier. You know, that's the engineer on the ship. Every captain has an engineer. Um, and it, it's interesting. I just feel like there was never really any depth to our characters. I never really felt like I was invested in them. I did love the relationship slash friendship slash sexy sexy between Alyssa and Hell Monkey like that was really cute and that was probably like my favorite part of it all and I did like the AI systems that's always my favorite thing in sci-fi's is the AI systems but I just found that there was nothing that really hooked me in this it's a three star book it was just an average read it's a duology so I, I do want to know what happens in the sequel because I am quite invested in Hell Monkey like I said it's still in the mornings I don't know what am I gonna start next? I do have the option. Hang on, sorry, this is annoying you guys. Um, I do have The Girl Who Drank the Moon. It'll be the first middle grade I read in a while. It's, it's been ages since I've read a middle grade, so I think this could be kind of fun to start. Okay, I'll catch you guys up in the morning. Bye bye. Hey, so I'm currently. 133 pages in to The Girl Who Drank the Moon. So I'm a third of the way through the book. I got that far last night. We live in this town that every year leaves the youngest child, which is always, you know, like a newborn baby, in the woods on this specific day to sacrifice to the witch in the woods because they believe that by doing this, they will appease the witch who lives in the woods so that she won't then come and terrorize the town and kill them. But the thing is that this witch that lives in the woods She's not evil, and she's actually kind of confused as to why once a year there is a newborn baby just left in the woods. And so what she does is she uses her magic and she brings it to the other side of the forest to one of the cities there and ends up giving this child to a very loving family that wants a baby. And in the process she actually feeds the baby starlight because 
that's kind of all she has to feed the baby with. And this then imbues the baby with, you know, just like kind of not, not powers or anything, but just makes it special. However, one time she gets a little bit caught up and she accidentally feeds the baby Moonlight. And by doing this, she ends up enmagicking the baby, which means that the baby will become a witch. And so now this witch must look after the baby. And so it's kind of that as a story. Now, this is very sweet. It's a middle grade. Um, it does read like a, like on the higher end of middle grade and sophistication level, but um, it's very slow. So I just, I think that this book is sweet. It's very beautifully written and it has a lot of great messages in it. It's boring and there's just not enough happening in it. I'm a very fast paced person. It's the reason why I tend to either read, you know, smutty books where that is just like delicious or fantasy books where it's, you know, high stakes. And this is just, it's lagging. And so I'm, I'm hoping that it kind of picks up a bit soon. As you know, Luna, who's the baby, as she ages up. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, that's my update for now. I'll catch you guys up later. I haven't read anything today because I had school and then it was late and I realized I hadn't edited and uploaded for tomorrow. So I had to do that. Now it's like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> but um, I just, I, I don't have the motivation for this book, like at all. Do we have the motivation for this book? No, okay, really? I've got like a third left. It doesn't look like a third when you look at it from this position. Yeah, it's just, it's so slow. It's so slow and just like, I'm not invested. I feel like I know so many people who have read this book and like they rave about it. They think it's one of the best middle grades they've ever read and like everyone's like head over heels. And I'm like, what, what am I missing? Why does this happen? I've not been very lucky lately with like hyped books. Are we showing everyone how beautiful we are? Oh, okay. Yes, mommy love you. Oh wow, this is a sexy view. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye guys, I'll catch you guys up tomorrow sometime. What's up? So my parents went to the city yesterday and ended up grabbing a bunch of packages that I had. And I'm really excited. One of them, I literally have no idea because two of them are from publishers and I know they're from publishers because it says, oh, Macmillan or Page Street on them. This just says like discover books on it. And like, I don't want to like show my address or anything, but like this is all over the package. And I, it, it looks like it's a mass market, like it's small, but I genuinely like, I don't know. Like, I don't think, no, I have no clue. Y'all, I'm so confused. It's another copy of Hearts of Flame, but like I have, I have no, I already. Oh my God. This must be the eBay book I bought. It said that this was gonna be a hardback, but it arrived as a, so I'm so, ah. That's not what eBay said. eBay said this was gonna be a hardback. And so I went out of my way to find a copy of the paperback. And now, <laughs> and now in this same vlog, I've gotten this book twice. One is the UK edition and one is the US. And they actually look slightly different. I'm so, <laughs> I'm dead right now that I now have two editions of this. Honestly, I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad. So let's see what this is going to be. It is a finished copy of, oh, no way, sick. Okay, cool. So I requested this, didn't get an arc, but I did get a finished copy of Fable by Adrian Young. So Adrian Young's such an awesome author. She wrote the um, Sky in the Deep as well as the girl that the sea gave back. Yeah. So this comes out on September 1st. Oh, it came out on September 1st. Anyway, she always has really pretty, oh, yeah, look. Her naked covers are always so gorgeous. It's just something that I always, you know, expect from her. So we're following 17 year old Fable, who is the daughter of the most powerful trader in the Narrows. And it's been four years since she watched her mum drown during an unforgiving storm. And the next day her dad abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food. To survive, she must keep to herself, learn to trust no one and rely on the unique skills her mother taught her. Wow, this is crazy. I'm so excited. And also this is just like such a pretty cover guys. Like it's not me, but. <laughs> and then this one from Macmillan. I, 
I really hope this is what I think it is. Because if it is, it's a very anticipated debut. Please, please, please. Yes! <laughs> okay, so it is Golden Fury. Ah! Yay! Okay. Um, oh, it even came with something. What's this? Oh, it came with just a little Wednesday books thingy. Oh, Samantha Coe! Okay, so if you guys haven't seen my anticipated debuts for the second half of 2020, this is one of the books. So we're following Thea Hope. She is a teenage alchemist. Her mum is a very renowned alchemist as well. And the two of them have been trying to create the Philosopher's Stone. And as soon as they get close to making it, Thea's mother goes mad, smashes all their work, and ends up just... Well, if she goes mad. Thea is slowly realizing through her mum's old work that there is a curse upon those who try and make the Philosopher's Stone. And so Thea ends up going to go live with her father, but she can actually not escape the alchemists who want to learn how to make the Philosopher's Stone. I'm really excited for this. It is set in 1792 France. Oh, cute. Okay, so this is the sequel of Woven in Moonlight, which is called Written in Starlight. I'm not gonna talk about what this is about because I don't want to ruin anything that happens in the original, like the first book in this companion series. I don't really know what you call those, but yay! Okay, so those are the three books. We got two arts and one finished copy. I think finished copies are so much fun to get. So I did finish Girl Made of Moonlight, whatever it's called, honestly, at this point. I finished it last night. It was, I was pushing to get through it. I gave it two stars. Okay, guys, I gave it two stars. The last quarter of the book was good, but by that point, I was just so over it. I was just, I, I didn't care anymore. I didn't care. Like, this is written to be a middle grade. It felt a lot more mature than middle grade, and it just felt like I was bored. I was so bored. I'm so sorry. I know so many people love this book and I just, I didn't. It spans all genres. Like I wouldn't say this is just for middle grade. This isn't just for adults. This isn't just for young adults. Like it's for all audiences and it is kind of a take on fairy tales. I went into it thinking it was going to be more of like a whimsical, cute middle grade and that's not at all what I got. <sighs> that sucked, you know? Yep. So, um, I know this like might seem, I hope this light's not like bad. I know this might seem a little bit strange, but um, I have something I want to talk to you guys about. So, uh, I think around a couple weeks ago, I was sent the Ben Q E reading lamp. It came in like this massive box, as you guys can see. It comes in um, pink, blue, this gray color I have here and like a cream color. So the way that it works is, as you can see, it moves really easily. I was a little bit skeptical when they reached out to me because I don't know, I've never had a company reach out to me to look at like an actual object. <laughs> but um, I was like, hey, I'm setting classes soon. I, I need a lamp to go on my desk anyway so I can do everything. And it's been freaking awesome. Like I love this lamp so much. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it. Give me one sec, there we go. So um, what's really awesome is that it moves with so much movability. So like when I'm <laughs> when I'm actually doing zoom, I like kind of move it so it's a bit over my face, so I'm not like in the dark. And then you know if I'm working on something and like I want it down low, or in general when I'm just doing stuff, I have it like normally up here. And I'm gonna insert a clip here to show you guys. You know it's really easy to turn on. You just tap it. So it's like a touch kind of a thing, which I adore. And then it has a little dial and you can change like what kind of color you want, which is something that I freaking love because I'm someone who hates when their lamps are like, or any lights are orange. I, I despise orange lights, okay? I like it to be like a bright, you know, like daylight color as it says online. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys that. I will link it down below if you guys, you know, want to check it out. It's freaking awesome. So if you guys are looking for a desk lamp, invest in this because... I love it and I'm so glad they reached out to me because I would never have come across this otherwise. But um, yeah, I mean I had some clips just before of me, I'm currently just doing some work for my classes, I have 
a quiz next Wednesday and a take home quiz to do for Monday and it's currently Friday. Um, I just posted my Akatara Long uh, announcement video so if you guys are not aware of what that is do check it out. But I really, I haven't done any reading. I'm supposed to start Blaze Breath Games but I like, I... <sighs> I'm just so busy and just end this vlog here. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like button down below. If you want to see more of me, just go to my channel. And until next time, thanks a bunch, guys. Bye.